So we have a bird there, a crow, I think, well, a corvid of some sort, rook possibly, too small for a raven I think, and it's lying with its wings outstretched on the grass, and I think it's doing one of two different things. It's either just sunning itself and absorbing some warmth from the sun in its feathers, or it's doing something called anting, which is uh, where it allows ants to cr crawl all over its feathers and relieve it of parasites. Now, this is interesting because Eva's gone and got interested now. Come on, Eva. Well, let's head on over there and see if there's an ant's nest or something there which the crow was sitting on top of. We might better figure out what it was doing just from having a look at the ground there. So it was around about here at the edge of that shady spot. So let's have a look and see, is there an ant's nest here? I can't see anything. Now I would, I would be expecting to see a little ant hill here actually teeming with active ants and I can't see anything of the sort. So I think that crow was just warming itself in the sun, just sunbathing. Maybe if you know different, you'd like to post a comment and let me know what you think it was doing. So anyway, let's head off down to the little water meadow that I visited so many times last year. But before we do, look at all these stinging nettles here. Now, stinging nettles are a fantastic wild food. Look at this. In fact, I made some nettle soup and there'll be a video recipe coming soon if it's not already uploaded and posted. But look at those nettles. There's enough nettles there to make gallons of nettle soup. Anyway, let's head off down to the water meadow. Now, it's rather muddy in this corner, which might mean that down there in the meadow it's also too muddy. Let's have a look anyway. I'm going to head on down there. And I think today what I'm going to try to do what I'd like to do is see if we can spot something different, something new, something maybe not new to me, but something I haven't talked about on the video before. This is there. Caution, this, this area is home to adders. Please be careful when using this area. Keep dogs under control. Well, it's Eva, so I'll do my best. Right, let's head on down here and see what we've got. This is probably earlier in the year than the first one we did last year. Eva, why are you eating grass? I can already tell. Yeah, it's very, very soft underfoot. And I've only got shoes on, I haven't got boots on today. So I think we may be out of luck for walking through here. Let's just have a look around the corner then, see what we got. Yeah, you can tell that not many people have been down here. We've had a very wet spring. Not many people have been down here because the path is overgrown and the horsetails even have taken over the path. So there we go, that's the, yeah, I'm not even going to try to go through there, it's too soft underfoot and too wet. But look at all the dew there, glistening on the horsetails. But you can see the path, where there would be a path normally through where the dog's going, it's still very overgrown, which means nobody's gone through here, which probably means it's very muddy. So I think we'll go around. We'll have to come down here another day, either when it's dried out or with better footwear. Okay, now this is interesting because what's happening here looks like sheer destruction, but actually it's just careful management. So these are hazel trees and they've been managed by coppicing. So they're allowed to grow to maybe three inches in diameter, trunks, and then cut completely down. And they will re-sprout and they'll grow a new thicket of poles and branches. And they seem to stand this treatment actually quite well. So this hazel timber, this is actually the same stuff that I used when I made my wooden whistle a few years ago. I used a piece of hazel from 
the coppicing down here where people have cut down all of the hazel trees. And I've actually got my eye on that nice straight trunk there. I reckon I could probably make something out of that. I've got an idea for it. So I may come back down here with a saw and help myself to one or two pieces of this coppiced hazel timber before it's all stacked up and burned or taken away. Now coppicing is an ancient technique and you can see these trees here. These were coppiced probably year before last and maybe three years ago for that one. So yeah, all of the trees along here, the reason they are made up of many, many straight upright branches is because they have been coppiced. And so people would own a section of woodland and they would coppice the hazel trees and others, other broadleaf trees, cutting them right down to the ground and then leaving them to grow poles. And so these sticks and poles and trunks would be harvested as a crop, essentially. So when they're thin sticks like this, they might be used to make wattle for walls or fences. Or when they're a little bit thicker, they might be used to make poles or sticks for furniture. And a bit thicker still, and they'd have been cut up into pieces to make charcoal. So we'll just go in and have a look at the other end of the water meadow. It is, again, very soft underfoot here. So it's been such a wet spring that it's very muddy down here. And I don't think we'll be going through there without appropriate footwear. Never mind, another day. There's a lovely patch of ramsons here, although they are starting to look a little bit tired. It's really pretty much the end of their season. The flowers are magnificent, but the leaves are just starting to yellow. And so this is pretty much the last opportunity to pick ramsons for the table, at least the leaves. Now I'm told you can pick and eat the little seed pods after they're formed. I mentioned that last year and I meant to go back and do it last year and I forgot. So maybe this year. There's more ramsons there in the hedgerow. So we can't go through the water meadow, so what can we do instead? Let's wander back through the Bluebell Dell and have a wander through past the river. And we'll maintain our objective. Let's see if we can find something that I haven't mentioned on video before. And then we'll talk about it. So this is the little Bluebell Dell, which as I mentioned in an earlier video, is actually an oxbow that's been cut off from the river, which is just over there. So there's a kind of crescent-shaped little ditch or valley here, and it continues around that way, and it would have joined back onto the river. But now it's just a little piece of damp woodland. This bottom bit here gets quite damp and, and actually forms a pond in the winter. And the bluebells seem to like it here. Now, it hasn't been such a great year for bluebells this year. The bluebells are always beautiful. But I think we had a bit of a cold, late start to spring. And it seems like everything's all grown up at once. And so we haven't got the benefit of the bluebells being up before the leaves are open this year. So they are pretty, but they seem to be a little bit drowned out by everything else that's going on this year. But I do enjoy just standing here and admiring the view. There is there's something about bluebells. Words and pictures can't actually quite capture the quiet majesty of a bluebell wood in full flower. You have to get out and see it for yourself. I hope you're enjoying this video, but I've got to say, there isn't anything quite like getting out here in person if you can, and experiencing wild bluebells in a bluebell wood. I'm there in the tree somewhere. That noise is a squirrel barking at me. Stop now. This is quite interesting here. So we've got a little fast run of the river here. And I don't know if you can see what I can see, but there are thousands of flies and they appear to be doing nothing more than <laughs> flying slowly upstream, turning around 
and then zooming back downstream really fast. Let's see if we can track them. How bizarre. I presume this is some sort of behaviour related to mating or feeding because it looks quite energetic and typically animals only expend energy if they're doing one of those two things, feeding or mating. Let's try from this angle so we can get a better view of that. So yeah, it is like a kind of insect racetrack really, essentially. Uh, zooming downstream and then flying slowly back upstream and starting again. How strange. Just strolling on through towards the woods at the far end there and we'll wander on through. But look at all these dandelions. Absolutely carpeted with yellow dandelion flowers. Now dandelion flowers are edible. You can pick them and fry them up in batter and interestingly I've tried that several times and one time I really enjoyed it and one of the other times eating them just seemed like a bit of a chore so I don't know if there's something about the right time to pick them maybe sometimes they're really sweet and other times they can be quite bitter so anyway let's head on through and we can see the dandelion seed heads over there standing up above the flowers and with a little bit gust of wind and this entire area will be a cloud of little parachute dandelion seeds floating through the air probably later today maybe this afternoon so we're just wandering through again this must be quite a familiar sight this little bridge here to anyone who's watched my videos before maybe the one about ramsons come on Eva Eva buy them Quickly! This is, I suppose, my favourite little bit of local woodland. It's very easy for me to get to, it's part of the charm, but also there's a fantastic sort of leafy diversity down here. And we've got the calm of the river little bits of it slow moving like this and other little bits of it babbling over rocks and I actually find it very calming and relaxing and restorative to come down here and just enjoy the bird song and the sounds of the river and even even sounds like people mowing their lawn when it filters through the trees and the bird song it can actually be quite a relaxing and reassuring sound but let's just take a moment to appreciate and enjoy these beautiful Ramsons flowers. Now, they do smell. <laughs> this whole area smells strongly of onions and garlic. But aren't these flowers just superb? So very many of them. And it's a little bit early in the day, but later on in the day, this place will be buzzing with bees, sipping on the presumably onion flavored nectar of these rams and flowers. Let's wander down further. So this part of the river here is probably about as far up as the tidal influence of the Hamble actually reaches. The, this is a tributary of the Hamble River, we're in Botley uh, in Hampshire, UK, and yeah, at high tide this river does actually swell and rise up, in fact you can see evidence of that over there on the bank, those ramsons leaves there overhanging the water 
you can see where they've been inundated by slightly muddy, silty water and they've taken on a brown covering. And actually, so they're quite dirty and, and discoloured. And that's where, at high tide, this river actually does rise. I'm not sure that there is ever any actual backflow and that the river reverses its flow because of the tide. But obviously when the tide is in further down the river, the water here that's flowing will back up and pile up behind the rising tide and will rise right up the bank. So it's quite interesting to have a tidal river right on my doorstep. It's ever so relaxing just listening to that water. And the bird song. You know, I think we might actually come down here later with the camera and a tripod. And we'll record a bit of slow TV so that you can just enjoy what I have a chance to enjoy every day. Sitting here, or standing here by the riverbank. Listening to the sounds of birds, the river, distant traffic, which when it's this far away, actually, as I say, it does have some sort of calming reassurance to it. The world is carrying on doing its thing beyond the perimeter of this little bubble of paradise we have here. Let's move on. Ah, so here is something not new to me, but something I haven't mentioned, I don't think, on any of my videos before. So this plant here, this is called garlic mustard. In fact, it has a number of common names, of quite a wide range of common names. Garlic mustard, jack by the hedges, sauce all alone. And it's a relative of cabbage and mustard and all of those brassica type plants which you can tell very clearly from the little four-petaled flowers. That's a characteristic marker of cabbage family or mustard family. But this is called garlic mustard. Now, that's an interesting name because it's not obviously closely related to garlic at all because it's a broadleaf plant. But the leaves, when they're crushed, they do have a faint garlic aroma which is quite unusual really, because it's not, uh, there's no reason for it to be like that, no reason for it to actually be, and it's not an allium. I would say probably that aroma is actually maybe more a bit like strong turnips. This plant's supposedly edible, and I have eaten the seeds, I've ground them to make my own mustard before now actually, and that was delicious. The leaves are supposedly also edible, as a green vegetable. I've only ever tried them once, and I found it inedibly bitter, but I'm told that it depends on where you pick it from. And so maybe growing somewhere here where it's not particularly challenged and it's got lots of moisture and it's not struggled to produce its leaves, maybe it'll be more tasty from here. I suppose we ought to give it a go, but not today. So that's garlic mustard. So that's the new thing for today. That's, uh, that's something I didn't actually expect to see down here because I haven't, I haven't seen it down here before. I haven't noticed it when we've been walking through. It's just a smallish patch. I haven't noticed this before. Let's move on. So there's a lovely little bridge here, and it's lovely to sit on this bridge. Let's just wander across and have a look at the view we can have from this bridge above the river. Now I have seen kingfishers down here before. And wouldn't it be lovely if we saw a kingfisher today? They are quite shy and elusive little birds though, so I think it's quite unlikely. But wouldn't that be a special treat if we saw a brilliant electric blue flash of a kingfisher's plumage zooming above the river? That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? So yeah, what a lovely, calming and tranquil view. I definitely think we'll come back here later today and get ourselves some slow TV footage of this river and of the sights and sounds of this location. So it's time to head on back up to civilization 
back up and see what the world is doing. Oh, look at that. We'll just stop and look at this. A large bumblebee buzzing around. Maybe looking for a hole in the ground that it can use for its nest. Leave it, Eva. Leave it. You don't need to chase bumblebees. Okay, so let's head on back up to civilization, rejoin the world, and carry on with life. But it's good to know that places like this exist as a bit of a refuge and respite from the hustle and bustle of life. So one last thing before we go. That little lane we've just walked up is called Lover's Lane. Isn't that lovely? So thanks for joining me on this walk through the woods this morning. I hope that's been interesting and I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Mm -hmm.